Biltmore, Biltmore was built in 1895 by George Washington Vanderbilt. He was the youngest of three grandsons of Cornelius Vanderbilt, who made the family fortune in the shipping industry. He visited Asheville in 1888, and he loved the area so much that he bought 125,000 acres and built this country estate there. The house, which is like a castle, has 250 rooms. Okay, we're at the fabulous Biltmore Estate, the Biltmore Mansion, or more like a castle, actually. Gardens, it's about 8,000 acres. It used to be over 800,000 acres. From there, you get an excellent view looking toward the mansion or the chateau. That goes out to the Italian gardens on this side. And back to the beautiful estate. Most of the rooms are really quite grand, like this main dining hall, which is, has the largest fireplace I've ever seen. In fact, it's so huge and so tall, it's like two floors high, and it has three separate fireplaces underneath that big flue. Um, it's really very grand, and it seats like 200 people, although they only have this dining set set up for about 25. This dining room is more of a private dining room just for the family and very close, close friends. Um, what I really love, of course, all the woodwork, but the ceiling is beautiful too. This dining room is more of a private dining room just for the family and very close, close friends. Um, what I really love, of course, all the all of the rooms that are on the outer walls of the home have beautiful views of the forestry and the countryside. And this is what really drew George Washington Vanderbilt to this area. He just loved Asheville. He was very much into nature and wanting to have a self-sustaining um, home and a self-sustaining farm and have all this beautiful um, landscape um, done for him and kept beautiful um, with natural um, plants to the area. So it's very grand and beautiful for everybody, including the help, which also had these same views. Atrium in the center. As soon as you enter the home, you go you go immediately into the solarium or gazebo area of the house. It's the first part of the tour. And it's just fantastic because they decorated it with all these natural um, plants and then, of course, really neat wicker furniture. So it's just perfect and I, I don't think you'd ever be able to get me out of that room. This is another view um, toward the solarium and toward that beautiful um, open glass ceiling gazebo. And um, just like I said, it's just such a lovely room. You bring me tea there and, um, and I would never leave. This is the tapestry room and the entire wall, including just above the fireplace, has all beautiful European tapestries. And so if you've been to any of the castles in Europe, you've seen that so many of the walls have huge tapestries and theirs, their castle is no different. Although this is more of a private area where the family would gather um, and um, personal friends would gather. It was not one of the main places where they would take guests. Amazing library in the Vanderbilt home. The books are on two levels and they have kind of a balcony area where you can walk on the top air, top row to see the books. You see here, there's stairs to get to those books and the magnificent fireplace here. And look at all of the beautiful scene. ceiling chapel. This is a portrait of George Washington Vanderbilt. He was very handsome and quite debonair. He was only 21 years old when he had this house built. It only took six years to build, so it was done by the time they brought Edith, his new wife, to the home, which means he was only 27 years old when it was completed. The large winding staircase is for all four levels above ground. A separate entrance for the basement is available in a different part of the house, but this is just spectacular. And those stairs are very wide. I think it's about six feet wide. So it's not one of those tight staircases. It's just beautiful wrought iron going up four levels.
And there is an elevator um, that goes between only between the first and second level. So if you want to go to the third or go above that um, for the tour, you would have to actually walk it. So um, what they do is that for anybody who has a wheelchair and cannot walk those additional steps to go see the rest of the house, they do have a room where you can see a video of the things that you would be missing, like the, um, the areas where they have the guest rooms. Here's George Vanderbilt's bedroom, all in a Baroque style. And the, bell is, the bed is elevated to show, show elevated status. And there's the wall, you open up the wall and that's the um, closet right there. And then it goes into the hallway. Oak sitting room. And this is the oak sitting room. This is a more private area for just the family and it has in it's kind of like a smoking room or a sitting room just for the family and on the far wall you see two giant portraits one of them that was commissioned by george um, vanderbilt was of richard morris hunt he was the home architect and then also of frederick law olmstead he was the person that did all the landscaping and was the naturalist. And, and you can show, you can see how much he valued these two men. They really became so tight in the overall vision for the home and for the landscape. This is one of the hallways leading to some of the other bedrooms in on the second floor where the family stayed. And um, you can see that even just the hallway is very grand. Mrs. Vanderbilt's room is absolutely stunning. It's oval and it looks out to the beautiful green forest and lawns. This room is on the third floor and it's an area that was a little bit more private because it was a family room area because the bedrooms were up there, but also that's the, this is where the guests would gather too. And there are a lot of musical instruments, including the grand piano. Edith Vanderbilt's bedroom. The elevator was bought at the World's Fair in the 1800s. It was the first elevators that were built. He found them there when he went to, <coughs> to the World's Fair and he purchased one. It goes just from one floor. It goes from the first to the second floor. So guests who have wheelchairs or need additional help can take the elevator, but they're only able to do those two levels. Anything else you would need to actually walk the stairs downstairs or upstairs if you want to see more of the house. Here's the beautiful this is the main dining hall, and what, what I was really surprised at is that it have a massive pipe organ. You can see organ. the organ bellows um, at the top of the um, of where you can see the bookshelves. Um, it's really amazing. So they entertain their guests with this huge church cathedral-like um, organ. This is the main dining hall, and what, what I was really surprised at is that it have a massive pipe organ. You can see the organ bellows um, at the top of the um, of where you can see the bookshelves. Um, it's really amazing. So they entertain their guests with this huge church cathedral-like um, organ. This is the main dining hall, and what, what I was really surprised at is that it have a massive pipe organ. You can see the organ bellows. Um, at the top of the um, of where you can see the bookshelves, um, it's really amazing. So they entertain their guests with this huge church cathedral-like um, organ. On the third floor are the guest rooms, and there are 35 guest rooms. This is one of them. They were really roomy and quite lovely. This is the vanity in one of the guest rooms. I really love the gloves and also the hat pedestal, uh, which has just this really sweet hat on it. Again, they really spared no expense when it came to furnishing all 35 guest rooms. And you're able to see about four of the guest rooms on the tour. We're entering the stone corridor. It is very cool. It's in the basement of the Biltmore House. I know that there's an elevator 
that goes from the basement up to the main living quarters because there's wine and other foodstuffs there. As soon as you go through those stone tunnels, which was really fun because you took, went through about three of them, it was like a maze, you end up at in the basement where they have the indoor recreation, which includes a bowling alley that has two lanes. And they had an indoor swimming pool, which was quite rare in the late 1800s. Most people didn't know how to swim then. If anything, they would go to the sea and they would just splash around and wade in the waves. But most did not know how to swim back then. So it was very unique um, that the Vanderbilts had a swimming pool and introduced their guests to swimming in the swimming pool. The Vanderbilts were the exception because the, um, Mr. and Mrs. Vanderbilt and their daughter all learned how to swim. Take a look at the gymnasium. Those are showers back there. There's weights. Your row machine. Boys. Very cool. The servants' quarters are all in the basement as well. Here's one of the smallest rooms. There were different class levels, just like you see on Downton Abbey, there were different levels of hierarchy with the staff. And um, so this is one of the smaller rooms. You can see the very tiny twin bed. This would be some for somebody that was a laundry person, a cleaner, fireplace boys, um, people of that level. Here is a larger uh, staff room, and this would be somebody who'd like that for the chambermaids, people that actually would work directly with the family. Here is the largest and the nicest of all of the staff um, bedrooms in the basement. This would be for somebody that is a leader of some of the workers. Um, so if you were in charge of the house staff, then this would be the lady or a man that would have this bedroom that was in charge of the house staff. Here you see where the servants ate. And so this is their dining room. And of course, at the head of the table would be people that are in more of a leadership role of the staff. And the center chairs would be uh, the regular staff members. This is one of the kitchens. They actually had multiple kitchens. They had some that had big ovens for baking. This one is for um, actually preparing like the food and, on a stove. They actually they had one whole room that was just a rotisserie. So it really was amazing. I would say there was about five rooms that we saw that were part of the kitchen. This is one of the pantries. Of course, when it came to, they did have refrigeration because they did have electricity in the home. Um, their house uh, was one of the first to, uh, homes to have electricity in the Asheville area, but Asheville actually had electricity power to the homes there even before the Vanderbilt started to build. So they were one of the earlier um, cities to have um, electricity. Um, this is one of the pantries, but they had separate areas for anything that had to be cold or frozen. So this is the florist room. They did all of their floral designs for the entire mansion from their own flowers um, on their grounds. And um, you'd see the, the vases on one side and all the flowers on the other. This room was about the size, I would say, of a large bedroom. Um, but it's just so neat that they were able to get them all from their own gardens. In the next slide, you're going to see outside of the house where the stables are and all that's available in the stables. Okay, we're right now in the carriage area and the of stables area of the Biltmore estate and as you can see if you go down there's different shops and restaurants um, just went into the candy store oh my goodness the one thing I was thinking about getting you guys have to have a look because it looks really good um, but also very cool is the chocolate Biltmore's dark chocolate and light chocolate I mean a milk chocolate oh wow so good so this is the confectionery. Go out here and you can see there's a toy maker shop and the Christmas pass shop, which I just got one of the Biltmore ornaments. We love collecting ornaments everywhere we go uh, for our Christmas tree. And now we're going to get a second tree because we've been traveling so much. We've been the lucky ducks for sure. And, um, and so now I just added the Biltmore to it. And then here's the toy shop. That's part of this hallway. Again, here's the hallway here with all the different shops and the restaurant. There's the toys and the stable cafe. I just did a video on and that's included here. Um, it's where the stables were and it's so neat how they have. Hey, I'm in the stable cafe, which is right part of Biltmore. And the reason it's called the stable cafe is because this is where the stables were.
It is a beautiful space. Really excellent. All the brickwork is still here. And each of the booths have a hayloft thing in them for the feeding. Each one looks as if you, there would be a horse in it, which is so cool. So you take a look there. That's where the hay would go. And prices are reasonable. A burger starts at like $12 with fries. They've got sodas. They've got the Vanderbilt wine. Really, really cool. The Vanderbilt Gardens are very famous, of course, and I would say that covers, oh, maybe 10 acres, perhaps more, that are to the right side of the Vanderbilt Mansion. Um, again, like you saw, they do all their own flowers for the house, plus, of course, the gardens all over. The, they have the 8,000 acres, of course. Um, and also, we missed in May all the blooms of the bulb flowers, which was the daffodils and the tulips. Those those were out in May, so we missed that because we were there the beginning of June, but it was still really lovely to see. And it's included in your price when you pay for the Vanderbilt tour, you've paid for basically everything to see on the grounds. The Vanderbilt Gardens, I expected them to be all around the house, kind of like a Versailles, um, but it wasn't like that. It was all in one section, and if you are facing away from the house, it's all to the right. And it's also on your way to go to the um, Antler Hill Village and Winery. Um, so you'll be able to see that on your drive. And you're allowed to drive all over the acres, um, the 8,000 acres, and you can spend the entire day. You can stop and have a picnic. You can stop at the farm and see the animals. There's so much to do. Once you've paid for your Biltmore ticket to go in the mansion, you're able to go everywhere else and spend the entire day. And on the next um, video, what you're going to see is you're going to see as we're passing, um, when you're driving around the Biltmore acres, you're going to see that there are streams and lakes as well. One of your stops is going to be at the Antler Hill Village and Winery, which is also part of the Vanderbilt property. There are shops and restaurants, including a pub and an ice cream parlor. The ice cream is made from the original recipe from the Vanderbilt farm. My favorite place to see in the village and was the winery, but also the history of the Vanderbilt's museum. You're going to want to take a look at it because it really gives you kind of an overall understanding of where this money originated and who these people were. They were very giving people and the people that worked for them said that they were treated very fairly and they felt very privileged to be able to have such nice places to live and to work. that have been keeping this estate going even during rough times like the depression and the early death of George Washington Vanderbilt and we just had I just had an ice cream sundae my mom had a strawberry milkshake and John had a cream sickle float and it was wonderful from the creamery and the recipe that they use for the vanilla ice cream is the old recipe back from George Washington Vanderbilt when he built this the Vanderbilt estate at age 21. Another place you're going to want to tour is the Biltmore Village, which is just outside of the, Bilt, the Vanderbilt estate. George had it planned out and built the village to house all the people that worked on the on the building of his of his home, but also the landscape workers and their families. Now these homes have been turned into shops and restaurants, and this is one of them. It's called the Corner Cafe. We celebrated my mom's 80th birthday and had her dinner here, and they brought her out a piece of beautiful cheesecake with a candle in it. It was wonderful. They also served lots of fresh fish, including the pecan crusted trout, um, which we dined on, and it was wonderful. So I highly recommend it. The Biltmore Village has kind of a Germanic or Tyrolean style buildings throughout the village. And the, 
when you build a new building building in the village, like the McDonald's that they built, it has to be in the same style as the rest of Biltmore Village. And you're going to see that in the McDonald's video coming up. Here is the McDonald's in the Biltmore Village in Asheville. And you can see that it's been done in the Biltmore Village style. From what I understand, what happened is that there was a flood that took down the original McDonald's. And um, so when they rebuilt, it had to be you're going to want to make sure when you go to visit Biltmore, um, Biltmore Estate, you're going to want to take a look at the town of Asheville, not just Biltmore Village, but also the downtown area. It has beautiful structures, turn of the century buildings all around downtown. And it's a college town, so there are loads of places to eat and things to do, including um, live performances, restaurants. Uh, they have outdoor alfresco eating, and um, you're going to want to drive to downtown, and hopefully you'll have at least a couple of days, maybe three days, to be able to see everything. Enjoy yourself.